Hello everyone, welcome to the video and today I'm going to teach you guys how to procrastinate successfully because if you guys saw in my last video, which I will link for you here and you should watch it after if you haven't, I was making a little magic mouse book and I had to cut out the footage of the last video because I didn't have enough time to like put in my progress and my process so I decided to just make like a separate video about it and I'll just put in the footage there but I made this little magic mouse book if you guys don't know who magic mouse is, he is the friend of flower cat which I made a book on as well this is what that one looked like and I will do a proper book tour of both of these by like the end of the semester but for now you guys can watch this video right here I also vlogged this this goes with this and this is his little friend so I don't mean to procrastinate ever and I don't usually do it but sometimes you know you just run out of time and you have to make something really fast and make it look like a lot of work so this is how I do it I did this all in one day pretty much and it's a flutter book, which was my only assignment guideline. So basically it has to fold out like this into one sheet of paper, as you see it does. And that was pretty much it, but I wanted to fill everything up and I want to make it double-sided as well. So it is double-sided. And the way I fill up my space makes it look like there's like a good amount of work done. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did it in this process video. But there's a lot of fun things going on in this book. I really like the way it turned out and I think it's really cute and has little comics in it and stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys my process. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get into it. Hello everyone. So we're gonna start on this flower cap book. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cut out my paper. So I tried to do this all in frame but to be honest, I only got like two shots of it in frame. So yeah, TLDR, I cut a bunch of paper and I made it into a book. And as you can see, there's like a little strip on that book. It's because I actually cut through the paper on accident one time. But anyway, gathering my materials, these are what I'm gonna use. I bought this like pack of variety like artesian papers at Blick the other day and so I'm gonna use those and then this is at a point where I thought I was still gonna have like a traditional cover I didn't know what I was doing and that's like the thing with some of these projects is that when I'm procrastinating I can't necessarily have a plan because it really is just like whatever I get to or whatever I finish so one of the ways I try to make it look good is I try to have like organized chaos I guess and so for this you can see I'm cutting out some panels and when I do these panels I don't really plan what's gonna go in them I kind of just like do it and then figure it out from there and usually the panels can drive like how the story is gonna go but as you can see they're all pretty much like the same size so it's not that big of a deal whether like I can figure out a good way to fill them up or not. I'm erasing some stuff and cutting out Magic Mouse. I'm just drawing some random things and I like to do this beforehand because well one is just easier than like if I were to plan something and have to draw that exact thing, I usually just draw a bunch of things and try to fit it into my comic panels. And so for this, I have a little magic mouse. I know it's going to go there. So then if I put it there, I'm like, all right, I'll make the first panel an introduction. And that's pretty much how it goes. I just do random things like that. And it works out semi well for me. It works out and it's fun and i enjoy it because i'm usually such a like specific uh idea driven person that this is like really relaxing to me that i just get to do whatever i want and fill up the space and honestly like when you procrastinate it and it's the last minute that's pretty much all you're concerned with is just filling up the space so that's what i'm trying to do most effectively here and it usually goes pretty well because you know i i really need to get this done so i'm drawing some stuff and then i'm outlining some stuff and i'm just putting whatever i see fit for this comic because i think there's a lot of different ways this could go and like i said i don't really think of a plot before i start so i just like start drawing things and then draw what happens next and next and next and next and that's pretty much it so i filled the book like that and then now i'm doing the cover i'm still going to go back to the insides but it's like I have most of it done and so this is the point where my Posca starts dying because I didn't think I've used it that much but maybe I have. I cut out these pages right and then towards the end they start getting wonky so I was originally thinking of just covering it with paper but then I was like you know what why don't I just cut out this organic shape so that you can't really tell like if it's wonky or not because that would be ideal so I decided to cut out Magic Mouse's head. And then after I did that, I was like, well, now he needs a butt. So now I'm going to draw his butt, his little bootay, and then his little legs because that is so cute, OMG. 
and I'm just coloring this in, which is really satisfying. I've been using a lot of Poscas lately, and I find that it's like really good for filling up space and doing things fast while still looking nice because it's like paint, you know? So it gives you this really nice finished look. Just scribbling it to color it in. This is the same way I color stuff in in my comics. I'm gonna cut this out too, obviously. This is like pretty fun, and I really enjoyed this, and I decided to do the back too because like why not? Because it's a book and it folds out, so you see both sides, so I might as well make it the same thing. And so I colored it in, and my Posca's running out, but I just need it for this last little section, so please. I'm really struggling out here, and I really like this blue. This is sky blue. It's not light blue, and it's not dark blue. I had to go to Blick specifically for this color, so this was very nice to use. But I did both sides, and now I'm going to do the head too, just because, you know, obviously I gotta do it. And it's things like this that are like really easy on the brain, if that makes sense. Like it's very not exhausting to do this, but it just takes some time, which is what I like to do, especially in times of crisis, because if I don't have a lot of time to do this anymore, then, you know, this is like the best way to do it. It's just to do things that are easy, but just take a little bit of time to make look nice. So scribbling this in, coloring it in, trying to make it look normal and intentional i guess even though this was totally an afterthought like normally for this stuff i would plan much better ahead of time but i didn't so here it is just being colored in and yeah i'm just trying really hard to make my posca last and then i decided to put his little face in so i'm drawing his little eyeballs and his little snoot and magic mouse does not have anything else other than eyes and a mouth and a snoot and angry eyebrows sometimes so Yes, I just use the same colors. I've also been doing like a lot of limited color palettes and I think they look pretty good. And it helps me from like one, being overwhelmed and two, making the work look not cohesive. So I'm gonna write in Magic Mouse. I wanted to do like the cover there cause I thought, you know, it'd be cute if the cover was a butt. It'd be, it'd be funny and silly and goofy. So we're gonna do that. So I'm writing in Magic Mouse. Um, and at this point, I already had most of the comics on the inside done, and they're not all comics. Some of them are just like panels, and some of them are just random things, but I'm writing in Magic Mouse, and that's also the good thing about Poscas, and I really like using them when I procrastinate because you can layer them. So if you make a mistake, it's really easy to cover up, and when you do other things like this cut paper technique, or if you want to call it a technique, it's really easy to cover things up if you like mess up, which is really important because if you're rushing, you're probably messing up a lot of stuff. So I can just replace anything I want. So as you can see now, there's like his little body and he's peeking out and it's really cute. And so I drew a bunch of other stuff on paper and I'm gonna cut it out now. And I realized this makes your work look more voluminous and like finished if you use different paper and colors and things like that. So I didn't even have a plan for these. They're just like, I don't want to say doodles because they are rather intentional, but they basically are just whatever I felt like drawing about Magic Mouse and our new character, Evil Mr. Cheese, which you guys will see at the end when I do like a little tour of this book. But I'm just going to cut these out, you know, easy, simple little drawings, but now they're on colored paper, so they look a little bit fancier. And I'm just deciding where I'm going to stick these in. And this is like a really satisfying part because I'm basically filling the book with stickers which i love stickers so i'm just gonna put these on here trying to figure out where i want them to go and then i'll fill the negative space on the pages later because also like sometimes i work on stuff during class and i can't do this during class i can't like cut stuff up during class but i can draw in this tiny little book during class so not too worried about that trying to just get things like intact you know but I want to do it double-sided, so this is one of the sides, and as you can see, it's pretty full, but we have these fold-out pages that are not full, because this is a flutter book, so basically it's all cut up of one sheet of paper that has no cut-through, like, parts, so it's all intact, so there's some, like, hidden compartments for stuff, so I'm trying to fill up everything that I can with, like, cohesive, high-energy level looking drawings, and I decided to write some stuff here, so I just like go through and just do some things mostly to try to just take up space but also to try to enjoy taking up the space while I'm doing it because you know this is still an assignment and I want it to look nice and so I'm making sure things are dry before I flip the page because that's really important and I'm just gonna stick more things down and this is just 
this is just the process, you know? And, you know, I don't procrastinate often, but when I do, or just when I run out of time, and this is like the last minute thing I have to do, this is the way that I do things, and I think it works out pretty well. I don't know how I really, like, came to figure this out, or I guess I didn't really have a choice but to figure it out, because RISD requires you to do a high volume of work at a small amount of time, and so if you can figure out how to work really fast, that's, like, really helpful, and that's just helpful in the industry in general, so, like, if you have a way of working that's still successful but just takes less time or brain power in this case then like all is good with the world you know i decided to write evil mr cheese versus magic mouse because that's like the actual title and so as you can see i like didn't plan any of this out ahead of time and now i have even more panels i drew some more panels and they need to be stuck in because you know, that's just the process. And I drew a curly tail. And also sometimes it's easier to fill space up by like drawing on other paper and then cutting it out and then gluing it onto your original project than just drawing it in your project. Because one, drawing in your project is really scary because what if you mess up, you know? But if you're drawing on a different sheet of paper and you mess up, just like don't use it and all is good with the world. And also when you're drawing on other paper, it's just so much easier to like not think of what your project necessarily needs and more of like what would just be cool and fun and i get to think outside the box more and like take risks and that's all very very good stuff so i really enjoy doing that and so like this process has been really effective for me in doing stuff as you can see here we have the zigzag mouse which is very very fancy but that's just how i do it you know and i'm going through i'm sticking these things down trying to take up space this is the back side of the comic book not that there really was a back but i did want it to be double-sided so i tried to put in the same energy on the back did it come through not necessarily but like i tried my best you know and so i'm gluing in more things and just trying to take up space and i can draw little comics and stuff during class too which is what i did for the flower cat book last time so like I'm also really just using my experiences of that, like, and basing off this project from that. So I'm just out here doing my best trying to fill in space because that's really just what a project is, right? Just filling up space. And when you have one of these non-cohesive ideas and like the whole concept is just for it to be chaotic, it works out pretty well because you don't really have to know how to do anything else other than to fill up space. So I have these, which are just empty panels and they're not even drawn in yet, but like I have faith that I won't really run into trouble trying to fill this up later, so I'm just gonna stick these in and, you know, that's a problem to deal with for a later time. That's also how, like, these books work and why I really like making books because if you run into a problem, you don't have to necessarily solve it right that minute. You can work on something else and still be productive and get to it later. And so here it is, uh, mostly finished. I think it came out pretty well. It has a little story about Magic Mouse fighting evil Mr. Cheese and so i'm just going to draw a few more things and so here's like a close-up of my process of drawing these guys it's all very simple like freehand closed lines one of the things i've found is that like when you do freehand drawings the easiest way to make them look super duper neat it's just to make sure your lines close really well so like at the end of each circle just make sure your lines meet as seamlessly as possible and everything else that happens in between it doesn't really matter and that's pretty much my uh go-to way of trying to make things nice looking and neat without putting too much effort it's just like close your lines you know if you guys ever draw like this just make sure to close your lines it makes it look so much nicer and like cohesive and you won't regret it but anyway yeah drawing more pics of magic mouse and mr cheese because those are our two main and only characters in this story. So just doing that, and this is how I take up space. And I'm drawing little thunderbolts, which has been like my little thing for the week of what I draw. Normally it's hearts and stars and sparkles, but I started doing lightning bolts as well. And they're interesting. They work, kind of. But here I am. I'm going to do some more freehand comics on the strip just so that... It fills up the page and looks more cohesive with the other side that I put more effort into. And yeah, we didn't see much of like the paper, the artesian paper or whatever that I picked out, but here it is, you know, in play. I'm writing some words on it and then I didn't even have like a plan for this comic yet. I just knew these were phrases I was probably gonna use. Like one of them says, help me. One of them says, zap. And one of them says, you can do it. And so they're very generic phrases that I know will come in handy, but just like 
adding them to your little book or your comic just makes it so much cuter so i'm just going through filling up space and at this point i guess i kind of have like an idea of what i'm doing because i've been doing this for like the entire book so at this point the plot is pretty solidified it has a lot of like broken narratives so it's not necessarily one single plot but like a theme if that makes sense and that's how I like to do it. I like to have a theme instead of an actual story just so that I don't have to slave over trying to make one cohesive story because that is exhausting. This is how it ended up going and I think it came out pretty well. It's very cute, you know, very comforting in my opinion. And I love drawing Magic Mouse. And it's easy drawing Magic Mouse. So very good procrastination solutions because that is what is important sometimes is you have to just come up with a solution and mine was having him attack an evil mr cheese and writing like way too many pages about it that's my solution so that's pretty much how i did that magic mouse very cute looking little guy and now he has a little head and little feetsies i really love how this came out so let's do a little tour of what the finished product looks like and i want to show you guys everything and so here is how the flower cat magic mouse guy turned out so this is magic mouse he is a friend of flower cats and it actually starts on the back like this here's his little butt it says evil mr cheese versus magic mouse and it just goes through of like their little chronicles of fighting and things like that he busts out his secret magic stuff and it's like those little wand from the top of his head he zaps things things like that there's also just random intersections of like this because like i said i have a lot of stuff to do so i can't like i can't fill every page you know so this one's a little bit of like a weird one but Here's some like the elusive string bean mouse, wow. And then this one is three round mochi my mouses instead of mice. Choose your fighter. And then there's like a bunch of different shaped ones. I like this one, he's powered up as you can see. And then we just have some more comics. Here's evil Mr. Cheese. As you can see, he's very evil and he is a cheese. And that's like the new mean guy. And he gets defeated because evil Mr. Cheese has been transformed into an ordinary giant grilled cheese sandwich. Now he can't do anything evil anymore ever again. So thank you, Magic Mouse, for that. And then if you turn it over, you have like a whole nother set of stories on this side. There's the very rare U-shaped mouse and things like that. So that's pretty much like how this goes. Lazy Blob Mouse. I really like the Magic Mouse. And so yeah, that's how I filled this up. That's pretty much how I do it when I am pressed for time. I make something like this and it's messy looking, but I don't think it's too messy looking. And so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed maybe this was helpful to someone i don't know if you guys are in art school you know the vibes and if you're not in art school you still know the vibes because you never have enough time for anything in this life so yeah that's how it came out i love him and that's an evil cherry i guess Ta -da! Look his little feet. And so that's pretty much how I made this book. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of like random decisions at the last minute because I didn't really plan for it to be like this. Yeah, it just like kind of happens because when I procrastinate and then I start filling up space, it usually just gets filled up through like random things. But if you do enough random things, it looks like a good amount of work. So it works out well for me at least. And so hopefully this video was like helpful if you're trying to procrastinate successfully i don't recommend procrastinating so like please don't do it but you know sometimes you have to do it and this works out well for me so so if you guys like this video please don't forget to like it subscribe do all of that good stuff i will be back this saturday with a regularly scheduled video because we have videos every saturday and i will see you guys in the next one so stay hydrated take a nap leave a comment what you think about magic mouse's book it has a lot of stuff going on and i've showed it in like two other videos already and i haven't really talked about it so this is my video finally talking about it. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you for watching!